So the first question is, are you okay? Yeah, everybody ready? People in front as well? Because I have to check all these things. This person next to me is signing into Dutch Sign Language. I sign international sign, which is voice to English. So this is how it goes, just to explain things to you. A lot can be said about my identity. Uh, my name is Dennis. I'm 24 years old. I'm gay and I live in Groningen. Just so you know, Groningen is very close to Haren. <laughs> so, but Facebook doesn't have any influence on me, so I'm fine. Um, and there's one big part of my life that has a big influence on my identity, and that is the fact that I am deaf, and she's deaf as well. And we've got an interpreter in the front who is deaf as well. Um, and maybe you'll say, you're sorry that I'm deaf, but don't be shocked. I'm fine. Most of the time when I, t when I speak to people the first time, they say they're sorry that I'm deaf, but honestly, I'm not, because being deaf has given me access to a very rich and powerful language, very beautiful language, which, which allows me to express everything I want to say. So, this sign language, or this using of sign language, has given me some barriers in my life, and that's what I'm gonna talk to you about. In Holland, only 3 to 5% of the population knows how to use this language. So it's a very small group. And language is a very powerful tool. It enables you to order food at a restaurant, um, to go to a shop and ask them where they keep that particular brand of lasagna sauce. You can ask for directions. Um, you can check if the train has been cancelled again or where, where the next platform is going to be. You can apply for a job, and you can make a career for yourself, or with language. But for people who are deaf and use a sign language, and I say a sign language on purpose, because every country has their own sign language, but that's a topic for another time. Um, the fact that I'm deaf and use a sign language doesn't mean that I get access to uh, society, because as Gwen just said, society is not de designed for us. So we sign, we have this language, but our sign language has another morphology, has its own syntax as well. It's different from the spoken language, Dutch. Um, let me show you an example. So this, this Dutch sentence, ik ben nu in de trein op weg naar huis, is a Dutch sentence. Um, just the English translation is appearing now on the screen. I am now in the train on way to home. It's a literal translation. If I were to sign that in Dutch sign language, that would be totally different. This is what it would look like. Nu ik waar trein naar huis. So you can see it's got a different word order. English is now I wear, now I hear where train to home. So it's very different. So we have some obstacles in our lives and I'll talk to you about some an experience of my own. I wanna know who of you knows the Dutch railway company, NS, who's ever traveled with them? I wanna see hands. Yeah, many, many people, of course, me too. And I have another question I have to, have to ask. So the Dutch railway company, who's ever had any problems with them while traveling? <laughs> yeah, me too. So, okay, I'll, let me tell you about my experience. The, one time I came back from London, it was very early, the flight left London at six o'clock in the morning. So I arrived at about nine-ish and I wanted to go to Groningen from Schiphol. But the train appeared to be canceled and I asked the train conductor what happened to the train. And just so you know, I have a deaf voice, so I don't speak as hearing people do. So I tried kind of signing and voicing, but they said, okay, the next train will be here in 25 minutes. The train arrived, went to Groningen, which was, it meant to be going, but I was tired and I fell asleep. 
And then all of a sudden, I got this feeling that many, many deaf people will recognize that something was off. And I opened my eyes and I saw people standing up, getting out of the train. So again, with my voice, I asked someone uh, what was happened. So he said, this train is broken. We have to change trains here in Zwolle. So I was okay. Looked for the next train and checked if that train really went to Groningen. So the train said, on the train it said Groningen. The sign on the platform said Groningen. And I got into the train and in the train you have this TV screen that said Groningen. So... Okay, so I went straight to Groningen, fell asleep again. So maybe you can guess what happened. Okay, so I woke up with that same feeling again. I just passed station Meppel, which, which is a very important station, because this is where the train goes into two directions, Groningen and Leeuwarden, which is absolutely not Groningen. So this TV, I opened my, my eyes and the TV said, welcome to, in the train to Leeuwarden. I was furious, furious, fuming, no communication, no equality, equality, nothing. So I sent a, le a letter to the customer services telling them off for this inconvenience. So I got this nice letter back from them apologizing for my inconvenience, but they didn't have, they explained that they didn't have time to update all the written information. So everything was only announced on the PA, which I can't hear. That was the time when I decided to, no, was not, no, that's not true. No, I decided this before then. Um, you may know that I work with deaf children in a deaf school in Haren. <laughs> and I, I teach Dutch to deaf children and these children are all very bright and I use DSL, Dutch Sign Language, as their language. They're very bright children. Um, and they're very bright because they didn't go to Haren because of the Facebook invitation. But anyway, they, they use DSL, they can express their opinions to me, they can tell me that I'm very boring, that I'm a very boring teacher, or that I'm a very cool teacher. They can tell me everything they want. But I know that uh, the hearing Dutch community expects everyone to you know, master Dutch, written or spoken. But they have Dutch sign language as their first language. So they learn written Dutch as a second language. And I try to uh, explain the rules of Dutch to them, but they sometimes don't get uh, things that are the properties that are embedded in the language, like sarcasm or certain expressions. But I want to raise their level so they can have full access to the hearing community. And I don't only teach children but I focus on deaf adults as well. I work with deaf adults as well, because I know that they uh, didn't have the benefit of the same high level education we have now in, in the Netherlands. So that's why I founded my company, uh, I develop projects, I do workshops, training seminars, uh, all to do with language, because I want to give these deaf adults the best chance to participate in the hearing community, to get access to the hearing community. And deaf people like to be among themselves. They like to use their own language, of course. Um, so all my friends are deaf, so we use our own language. That means that uh, we don't focus on the hearing uh, community as well, uh, all of the time. But I want to give them access to the hearing community, but I also want to bring the hearing community to the deaf community. And that's why I started Duo Tres, which is a weekly news program on the internet, it, and it's, uh, it brings the most important news of the world or of the deaf world, what's happened to the deaf community in sign language in three minutes. And it's a very good program. We have a thousand viewers every time. The deaf school uses it, uh, the inter to university uses it, and deaf people watch it at home behind their laptops. And we have a wonderful team. They're all volunteers. And they work very hard to give people, deaf people, the best possible access to the hearing community, to get them to understand the hearing community. So I teach deaf children, right? On the, at the deaf school. But the fact that I am a role model to these children 
is not commonplace in the Netherlands. And there are, there are countries in Europe where that's not the same. And that is why I joined the board of the European Union of the Deaf Youth, EUDY, uh, which is based in Brussels in Belgium. And it's a non-governmental organization. And our biggest aim is to raise the level of education within Europe. And at the same time, we want to have sign languages ratified. If all countries ratify their sign language, that will be great. <coughs> so if Dutch sign language were, would, were to be ratified, that would make a big change in the life of lives of deaf people. That would mean that we would get our prime minister or our new king interpreted, for instance. And you could go to Amsterdam Central Station to see if the trains have been changed again. You can get this information signed to you. Or you go to a restaurant and you can you know, order your favorite hamburger, extra mayo, no lettuce, extra cheese. And that's what you could do. And that would be a perfect world. And for that perfect world for us to exist, it would be perfect if you would support our sign language, deaf people, and if you were, have, were to have respect and understanding for deaf people, because we're all the same. If that were to happen, we can make a big change. Thank you. Thank you. Three, two, one, ready.